Hi guys, Larry Feldman with a lesson on functions. And um, I'm going to explain the benefit of functions by first writing a program without functions so that you can see how um, inefficient it is and how functions can make a program a lot more efficient. So let's uh, create a new file and save it as functions to our desktop. And as usual, title, author, and date. Okay, so what we're going to do is write a program that calculates the third side of three right triangles. Um, in other words, it's going to figure out the hypotenuse of three right triangles using the Pythagorean theorem. So the first thing we need to do is import the math library so that we can use the square root function. And then let's say we have triangle 1 has side lengths 3 and 4. Triangle 2 has, has side lengths 5.6 and 9. And triangle 3 has side lengths 8, 10, 8 and 10. And then what we can do is we can figure out the hypotenuse of triangle 1 is math.square root. And let me just back up a second and put a comment here. We know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. So the hypotenuse is c. So we need to take the square root of the first side, which is triangle 1, position 0, squared, plus triangle 1, position 1, squared. Let's take a look at that. Triangle 1, position 0, is 3. In other words, one side in triangle 1 has a length of 3, and the other side has length of 4. That's triangle 1 at position 1. So we need to square the sides and add them, and then take the square root. So that's hypotenuse 1. And then let's cut and paste for hypotenuse 2. So we're going to use triangle 2 here and hypotenuse 3. And then let's output the answers. Hypotenuse 1 hypotenuse 2, and hypotenuse 3. Save it and run. Okay, so let's notice that the first hypotenuse is 5. That sounds correct because uh, 3, 4, 5 is a, is a very common right triangle. Next triangle has legs of 5.6 and 9. This is saying the hypotenuse is 10.6. The third triangle has sides of 8 and 10. The third side is um, calculated to be 12.8. They sound like reasonable answers. Now, notice how much duplication we did here. We wrote three equations for the hypotenuse, all very similar, but with with slight differences and there's a lot of room for error here. If we 
accidentally called this triangle 1, uh, that would have screwed up the second hypotenuse. If we accidentally put in a 1 here, uh, that again, that would have screwed up the second hypotenuse. So um, by duplicating code, you run the risk of adding errors or bugs. So now I want to do an example where we use functions so that we can remove redundancy and increase the reliability of our software. Okay, so to create a function, we need to use uh, the word DEF, and then we give the function a name. Let's call it Pythag, for uh, short for Pythagorean Theorem. And this function takes two parameters as inputs. Let's say side one and side two. And um, just uh, real briefly, a parameter is, is like a variable that is passed to a function. So we are passing side one and side two to this function called pythag. And the answer, which is the hypotenuse, is math dot square root side one squared plus side two squared. And then we are going to return from the function the answer. Now, how do we use this function? So let's make a comment that this is the main portion of the program. Even, even though the function is listed at the top, it's not executed it's not executed first because of this DEF word. Um, those are skipped and only used when, when they're explicitly called, which, which I'll show you in a second. So let's define triangle 1 just like before. It has sides of length 3 and 4. And then what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the hypotenuse by calling the function pythag with the legs of, of triangle 1. So we can um, write that like this. Triangle 1 uh, number 0, which stands for the, the 3 here, or represent the represents the 3 and triangle 1 element 1 which represents leg 2 or 4 leg 2 which has length of 4 and actually let's call this hypotenuse 1 I'll just put a 1 and then let's say triangle 2 has length 5.9 comma 8.2 and we're going to calculate the second hypotenuse by calling Pythag using triangle 2 element 0 and element 1 And lastly, we have triangle 3, and I'm just making up numbers here, and we have hypotenuse 3, so we're going to use triangle 3, element 0, and triangle 3, element 1. And then the last step is to print the answers. Hype 1, hype 2, and hype 3. 
Let's uh, save this and run it, and then I'll go through the, the code line by line here. Okay, so this gave us outputs of 5 for the first triangle, 10.1, and 12.96 roughly. And those sound reasonable. So let's, let's go through the uh, program real quick. As I said, DEF is skipped until it's called uh, explicitly. So we, we get to the main portion of the, uh, of the program. Uh, we define triangle 1 to be a tuple with two numbers, 3 and 4. Those are the lengths of the legs of triangle 1. Hype 1 is the hypotenuse of triangle 1. And we calculate that by calling this Pythag function. And we pass it two parameters, triangle 1 element 0 and triangle 1 element 1. So those are the two legs of triangle 1. So at this stage, we come up here to Pythag. We are expecting two parameters as inputs. Here, they're called side 1 and side 2. However, what's being passed to this function in this case is 3 for side 1 because of this length 3 and 4 for side 2. We define a variable called answer which is just the square root of side 1 squared plus side 2 squared and then we return the answer. Now that return value gets assigned to hype 1, hypotenuse 1. Then we move on to triangle 2, calculate the hypotenuse of triangle 2, and triangle 3. And then we print the answers. Now notice this nasty formula here we only, is only written once. Unlike the last example where we wrote it three different times, by using a function we only had to write it once. So if it works one, if it works a few times, chances are it's always going to work. Um, so we minimize errors that way. Um, of course, we don't eliminate all. We can't eliminate all bugs because there there is room for error here um, using the notation triangle one, triangle two, and triangle three, hype one, hype two, hype three. If we um, use the wrong number in any of these spots we we will introduce bugs however we have eliminated some possibility of error by writing this Pythagorean theorem function one time this example program shows how we can use functions to remove redundancy and and therefore decrease the chances of error um, however there are a lot of cases, a lot of programs where the benefits of functions are, are even more apparent and, and you will likely see um, in, this, in this class and in future videos how functions will uh, decrease redundancy and reduce the amount of, of code that you write more dramatically than this example. But I just wanted to give you uh, some sense of, of how functions work. That's it for now, and I will see you next time. Thanks.